二零二零年第七条题目系有关于传染病同埋如何控制传染病嘅散播嘅。咁以下呢幅图咧就显示咗蚊嘅生活周期或者佢嘅生命周期啦。由蚊嘅卵啦成长成为幼虫啦，跟住头三日都系休息、交配、进食，到第四五六七日咧就系休息、休息、产卵同埋进食啦。咁呢四日咧就会不断循环啦，最多循环六次啦。咁 Part A 呢就問返我哋啦，提供蚊子傳染疾病嘅一個例子啦。咁呢個題目自不然考返我哋有關於傳染病嘅概念啦。而今次嘅傳染病呢，係由蚊呢所去傳播嘅。咁我都想借呢個機會啦，同大家溫一溫書啦。究竟媒介係咩嚟嘅呢？媒介咩嘅角色呢？就係、是、會承載住個病原體，去到一個新嘅宿主嗰處。因為講到明傳染病啊嘛，啊自不然啦，就可以散播開去，由一個嘅個體就傳去俾另一個嘅個體啦。咁例子呢，大家一定要袋返幾個喺袋㗎啦。之前嘅題目呢，都有問過嘅，日本腦炎啦。喺書本都有教過嘅登革熱啦，同埋藥疾啦，喺新聞啦都會聽過啦，就係債卡啦。咁下次咧，其實佢都有機會問下你咧，登革熱啊、藥疾啊、日本腦炎啊、債卡啊或者黃熱病，究竟佢哋係由邊一啲嘅病原體所導致嘅呢？例如債卡啦，就係、是、由債卡病毒所感染啦；藥疾咧就由寄生蟲咧所引致嘅。日本腦炎啦，就係日本腦炎嘅病毒啦。咁除此之外啦，下次嘅題目咧都可以問下你，仲有冇其他嘅媒介啊、呼應啦、同埋曱甴啦，又或者問翻你啦，咁究竟只蚊係點樣傳播疾病噶？例如蚊咧就係透過吸血嘅時候啦，嗰啲病原體咧就會進入咗個宿主嘅血入面啦。又或者同埋呢個身體防衞一齊問，就係睇下蚊咧究竟係點樣去突破到我哋嘅物理防衞啦，即係話我哋嘅皮膚啦。咁原來啦，個蚊嘅嘴咧就係一支針咁樣款嘅喎，就可以刺穿到我哋嘅皮膚啦。然後到 Part B 啦，食物及環境衞生署引入咗一啲真菌嘅物種，去控制到本港蚊子嘅族群大細。而呢啲蚊咧，如果受到真菌感染嘅話咧，就會喺幾日之後咧就會死亡噶啦。咁究竟啦，呢啲蚊同埋呢啲真菌物种之间嘅生态关系系乜嘢呢？咁呢个题目啦，就系考紧嚟生态关系啦。咁我哋今次明显见得到咧，蚊咧系死咗嘅。咁今次我哋明显见到蚊咧系受害嘅。咁但系佢又唔似系竞争，因为佢系感染咗佢啊嘛。咁事不宜啊，喺你嘅脑袋入面咧，就应该会有暴裂啦。同埋寄生啦，系咪？呢条题目正正就系考大家分唔分得清寄生同埋捕食咧。咁啊，两者最大嘅分别咧就系讲紧啦，捕食咧系有一个捕猎啊、捕捉啊、杀死啊一个咁样嘅过程嘅，系真系讲紧食咗嗰只嘢嘅。寄生咧就唔同啦，佢系可以住喺嗰只生物嘅表面，或者住喺只生物嘅入面啦，从而咧就获得益处啦，亦都对佢嘅宿主咧引起一啲坏处嘅。所以呢度咧都要提翻大家啦，一部分嘅真菌咧，其实佢哋都系一个寄生嘅病原体嚟嘅，相信大家都唔陌生噶啦。香港脚就系由真菌感染噶啦，咁就系咧一种寄生嘅关系，啲真菌咧就寄生喺我哋嘅皮肤啲脚趾罅之间啊。跟住去到拍斯，為咗令到呢個真菌嘅物種對啲蚊咧更加致命，研究人員咧就製造咗一啲能夠喺蚊嘅身體入面產生毒素嘅基因改造真菌，而呢個生物防治 （biological control） 嘅效用咧，我哋就可以透過量度翻維期十四日嘅測試當中，究竟啦啲蚊嘅成蟲存活率嘅高低。去做翻一個探究嘅，翻呢幅圖咧，我哋睇翻由零到去到十四日啦。咁究竟嗰啲蚊受到唔同類型嘅真菌、正常真菌啦、基因改造嘅真菌啦，同埋冇受到真菌感染嘅情況底下啦，究竟啲蚊嘅存活率係幾高咧？呢、這個題目咧，自不然就考翻我哋數據分析啦。咁應付呢啲圖表嘅題目咧，預備把間尺就包冇死噶啦。咁題目就問我哋啦。而家啲蚊嘅第六日嘅存活率係幾高？咁自不然啦，戒一戒條線喺第六日先啦。然後啦就逐一擊破咯。冇受到感染嘅話咧，有九成嘅存活率；受正常真菌所感染嘅咧，就有八成半嘅存活率；受到基因改造嘅真菌所感染嘅咧，就得一半嘅存活率，五十個 percent。咁答完第一條之後咧，第二條就問啦：基因改良咗嘅真菌能夠將蚊子嘅族群喺幾代之後咧，就完全消滅咗，去 wipe out 咗佢啦。而普通真菌咧係唔能夠咁樣做嘅。咁題目就要我哋參考翻蚊子嘅生活周期啦，同埋 C 一 part 嘅呢三個嘅數字答案啦，去解釋翻呢個現象啦。成條題目咧就係、是、考翻我哋啦，能唔能夠將呢個數據同個蚊嘅生命周期、生活周期。
，去得出一个结论，就系讲翻喺几代之后，我哋就能够将蚊子嘅族群完全消灭咗佢。当中有啲咩嘅思考逻辑咧？咁第一個步驟呢，我哋就要比較返用基因改良嘅真菌同埋正常真菌啦。至於去撲殺啲蚊嘅效果有幾高呢？我哋會發現啦，第六日嘅時候啦，如果我哋係用咗基因改良咗嘅真菌呢，係得返一半嘅蚊係可以存活落嚟嘅啫。而用正常真菌嘅話呢，都仲有八成半嘅成蟲呢係可以存活落嚟嘅。咁当我哋知道咗呢个存活率之后啦，呢、这个数据有咩用呢？我哋就要去諗返第六日有咩咁特别啦。原来第六日就係啲蚊去排卵嘅时期，即係繁殖嘅时期。然后我哋就去諗下呢一个生物防治嘅终极目标，或者而家嘅呢个现象啦。过咗几代之后，我哋係能够完全消灭咗呢啲蚊嘅。咁你自不然就会知道啦。用一個基因改造咗嘅真菌，由於佢每代係減一半啊嘛，咁即係話啦，就算佢繁殖都係得一半嘅效果。然後我 keep 住再用嘅話，即係話第一代已經殺咗一半，即係話得翻一半去排卵繁殖咯。再去到下一代，我繼續去噴灑呢啲咁嘅真菌，又再殺一半。咁即係話啦，利用基因改良嘅真菌咧，係能夠撲殺到多一啲嘅蚊。咁我哋就会知道返，受到基因改造嘅真菌所感染嘅蚊呢，其实佢哋个族群数目呢，应该係会少过受到正常真菌所感染嘅蚊嘅。咁啊，因为每一代我都杀一半啊嘛，久而久之呢、这个差别将会越嚟越显著。你幻想下，有一批蚊呢，我就係每次杀你一半，每次杀你一半。但另一邊咧，每一次咧，淨係殺你十五個 percent， 咁所以你推算得到咧，佢哋嘅族群數目咧，應該係越嚟越顯著。好，跟住啦，又嚟到一點出發啦，今次就蚊就起點啦，然後啦就考翻我哋傳染病啦，同埋生態關係啦。咁當中第一樣嘅就講下媒介啦，咁蚊係一種媒介，但係啦，除咗媒介之外咧，仲有另一個字眼咧，我都想同大家講一講嘅，就係、是、帶病者啦。咁啊，帶病者同埋媒介有乜嘢嘅分別咧？喺留言區留低你嘅答案啦，睇下你嘅理。理解啱唔啱咯？跟住啦，又去到生态关系啦，大家一定要温翻书啦。咁今次咧特别要讲嘅就系寄生啦，同埋病原体嘅特性啦。咁啊，病原体会引致咩嘅疾病嘅例子，大家又要知一啲啦。今次咧仲要讲埋呢个防治疾病传播嘅。咁当中点解我要加埋个病征响树咧？咁其实咧，我想借呢个机会咧，同大家讲下个传染病啦，就由病原体所引致啦。咁病原體啦，令到你病嘅時候，你會表現出一啲特定嘅病徵嘅，例如咳嗽啦、流鼻水啦、屙啦、嘔啦，係咪？咁呢啲病徵啦，我哋齋睇就話，哎呀，搞到我哋好辛苦囉。」但經過你屙啊同埋嘔啊，其實你可以將呢啲病菌排離開個身體。对我哋嘅身体呢，其实系有好处嘅。而同一时间啦，其实对只病菌都有好处嘅。你会话吓，我排走佢对佢都有好处，但系你试下站喺病原体嘅角度去求咩呀？就係、是、求散播自己啊嘛。佢喺你身体当中不断咁样去繁殖，一变二，二变四，四变八，哇，变咗好多之后啦，搞到你屙口肚痛啊，打黑黐嘅时候呢，就最好啦，就可以将我呢只病原体呢噴去另一个人嗰树，咁我就可以寄生喺另一个宿主身体入面啦。咁所以题目去到后段呢，就讲返防止疾病嘅传播啦。今次用嘅例子呢，就係基因改良嘅真菌啦。咁我特别想去讲下嘅就係啦，逢亲基因改良嘅东西呢，啲题目係总有机会有问下你嘅，有冇啲潜在危机呀、啊？」不禁呢，又要提返啦，生态之间互动，记唔记得咧？前嗰条我哋有福寿螺啊，嗱福寿螺呢就俾人食嘅啫，点知呢？佢就无啦啦逃走咗，就系呢，喺个大自然底下呢，清王清霸。咁如果呢个基因改良嘅真菌系泄漏咗去大自然嘅话啦，又会唔会引起另一啲嘅生态灾难呢 g o to all question seven is about the infectious disease and how to prevent the spread of the infectious disease. So this diagram shows the life cycle of the mosquitoes go from eggs and then they grow up as the larva and then for the days one, two, three, it they rest, mate and then feed. They may repeat up to a maximum of six cycles for rest, rest, lay eggs and And feed. So for the part A, give one example of the mosquito-borne disease. So this question it needs us to recall the example of the infectious disease, especially the mosquito-borne. I would like to grab this chance to talk about the role of the vector of the mosquito 
A vector is an animal that carries pathogens to a new host. And in the book, there are different examples for you. For example, the dengue fever, malaria. In 2017, we have the example Japanese encephalitis, Zika, and yellow fever. You have to prepare several examples for the disease. And possible question variation, it may ask you give another example of the vector. For example, the flies and the cockroach. And how do the mosquitoes spread the disease? For example, when the mosquitoes suck your blood, and then the pathogen may enter your blood. And it may also ask you about the body defense. How do the mosquito break through the physical barrier, which is our skin? Because the mouth part of the mosquito is very sharp, and then it will penetrate our skin, and then the pathogen can enter our body. For part B, the Food and Environmental Hygiene Department introduced a fungal species to control the mosquito population in Hong Kong. Mosquito will die in a few days if they are infected with the fungus. So what is the ecological relationship between the mosquitoes and this fungal species? So this question is checking us the concept about the ecological relationship. Because the mosquito, they are cute. So that means they are the one get harmed. So you may be able to recall predation and parasitism. And this question also checks us to distinguish the parasitism from the predation. Predation is the interaction between two species in which one species hunt, captures, and kill the other for food. So you can see the predator will really eat the prey. However, for the parasitic sum, the organism live on or inside, and for the parasitic sum, the parasite live on or inside other organism, obtaining benefits from them and causing them harm. So they are the parasite. And the organism being harmed is the host. In this case, we need to recall the features of parasitism of the pathogens. The pathogens, for example, fungi, so they are the parasite. Therefore, the ecological relationship is parasitism. And I'm sure that you remember the example of athletic feet. There are fungi growing in between our toes. And for part C, to make this fungal species more deadly to the mosquito, researcher produce a genetically modified fungus which can produce a toxin in the mosquitoes. And the effectiveness of this biological control was examined by measuring the survival rate of the adult mosquito over 14 days. So you can see in this graph from 0 to 14 days, and then we can compare the rate of the survival of the adult mosquito without the fungal infection, infected with the normal fungus, and infected with the genetically modified fungus. And for part one, we need to use the data from the graph to complete the table. For this question, checks us the data analysis. For this graph reading question, you need to prepare a ruler. And in this question, it asks us to check the survival rate on day six. So we use the ruler, draw a straight line, and then cut the curve. Without the fungal infection, there are 90% survival rate of the mosquito. Infected with the normal fungus, the survival rate is 85%. And infected with the GM fungus, the survival rate is 50%. So after we get this data, we move on to part 2. The GM fungus, but not the normal fungus, was able to wipe out, that means eliminate, the mosquito population after several generations. With reference to the mosquito's life cycle and answer in part C1, explain this phenomenon. This question, it checks us the critical skills is that we need to relate the data to the mosquito's life cycle and to come up with the consequence on the population size in the subsequent generations. And the thinking logic is that, firstly, we need to compare the effectiveness of the normal fungus and the GM fungus. So you can see that on day six, only about 50% of the mosquito infected with the GM fungus survived to reproduce. Because on day six, that's the day for them to lay egg. While 85% of the adult mosquito infected with the normal fungus survival to do so, Therefore, you can see that they cannot survive on day 6, they cannot lay egg for reproduction. As a result, the former will have a lower population size than the later one in next generation. So you can see that the mosquito infected by the GM fungus, every generation I can kill half of them. And finally, we realize the impact of the fungal infection on, on the reproduction of the mosquito for several generations. So you can see the difference would be amplified after several generations. And finally, 
the mosquito infected by the GM fungus will be wiped out. Let's talk about the curriculum mapping. This question starts from the mosquito and then it checks us the concept about the infectious disease and the ecological relationship. So for the infectious disease, this question checks us the concept of the vector. And apart from vector, I want to remind you another terms. It is the carrier. So can you distinguish carrier from the vector? So leave your answer in the comment section. And for the ecological relationships, station, competition, commensalism, mutualism, and the parasitic sum, I think that you are familiar with them already. And this question, it checks us the parasitic sum and the pathogens. So you can see the pathogens, you must prepare several examples uh, called the exam. So you must prepare several examples of the disease caused by those pathogens. And then the question, it talks about the prevention of the disease transmission. And we'd like to talk about the sign of the infectious disease. For example, coughing, sneezing, uh, vomiting, and diarrhea, something like this. So it is a good way for us because we can remove the pathogens from our body. And it may not be a good thing for the pathogens. No, no, no. It can also be a good thing for the pathogens, although they are removed from your body but they are probably be transmitted to another individuals. Imagine that if you are not wearing masks, if you are not covering your mouth, and then you keep sneezing and coughing, then you know that the pathogens, they will be spread and transmit to other individuals. And then this question also talks about the GM fungus. And for any GM organism, the question may ask you any potential hazard. And I would like to recall the question about the apple snail. Apple snail actually is for human consumption, but some of them they escape and then they become dominant in the nature environment. But what if the GM fungus, uh, they are spread outside of the laboratory, so will they cause another ecological disaster? 